Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today and thank you for your support. Today I'll be talking about the Analog Productions Atlantic 75 series release of Genesis, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, which has just been reissued in a 4x45 format, mastered from the original tapes by Chris Bellman and pressed a QRP, done in a beautiful, uh, elaborate stout and gatefold. So I'll show you all that in a moment. Um, I also have a reference copy, which is the classic 180. So I'll have some commentary on that as well. Before I get started, if you are new and haven't already, please consider subscribing. If you are already subscribed and you would like to help the channel grow, please share the link with someone else that might be interested. That would be a great help to me. And um, also, um, the Pressing Matters uh, storefront is always listed in the description box below, and it's an excellent way to support the channel as well. Please check that out. Um, so let's get on to The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Uh, this was released in 1974. Um, I wasn't there contemporaneously. Um, I came to Genesis a little bit later than this. So it must have been quite a shock to see this in the racks because the previous uh, three albums had uh, very colorful um, paintings for their artwork. And here we have uh, a very surrealistic series of photographs in black and white. Also, the logo had changed and this was a concept album for the first time. Um, it signaled a change for Genesis for sure and the music reflects that. The storyline and the songwriting reflects it as well. Um, this was Peter Gabriel's baby in a way, um, although everyone contributed of course, but the storyline and the lyrical content are all Peter Gabriel and for better or worse, um, it makes it uh, quite a different sounding album than the previous ones. It has a gritty urban sound to it. Gone are the, the lush um, pastoral scenes of uh, England and we're plunked right down into the middle of New York City for this album. Um, I'm not gonna try to decipher the story for you. Um, that will take a whole video in itself. And each time I've tried to film this, it's just gone on too long. Um, even going track by track through this, it goes on too long. So I'm going to try to keep this brief. Um, a lot of you were uh, a little nervous when I said in the previous video um, that I just put out, I said that I was disappointed with a few big name releases. And um, I want to report that this is not one of them. <laughs> so you can rest assured that I wasn't referring to that. And what I was referring to, I will get to at some point. So um, this is not a disappointment whatsoever. This is gorgeous. Take a look at this. This is a one inch spine. And the way they constructed this gatefold is like this. So there's four pages. If you look, there's a wide, a wide spine, you know, so what they did to create this was uh, put a gatefold, paste it into each side. So this is actually a continuous piece. This is just one sheet of cardboard. It's glued here to this part. So this is double thick and it creates a wonderful package. The original printed content of the, um, of the original album is in the first part. So that's the story. And then you get what were the original inner sleeves with the lyrics on the rest. So very, very nice in that respect. Um, unlike the previous edition um, that was released of Selling England by the Pound, uh, this does not have the high gloss film lamination that you saw on that cover. Why they decided not to do this, I'm not sure. It might have been a technical issue. Um, it does have a light sheen to it, probably just the board itself. Um, I would have liked to have seen a snowy white gloss, high gloss cover, um, but that was my only minor disappointment in this record. Um, the new mastering is by Chris Bellman, is cut all analog from the original master tape, and it sounds wonderful. I have a Classic Records 180 that has been my reference for many years. 
I let several pressings go when I got that one because they were obviously inferior. They were the US pressing, um, maybe not a Porky press, but one of the original ones, um, early ones, and a Japanese pressing. Both of those paled next to the classic. And I've always considered the classic to be a great sounding edition of this album. When I finally got to sitting down and comparing these, I realized a couple things. One is this is cut a little bit lower and it needs to be turned up if you're going to be doing comparisons to match, level match. You probably have to turn it up a little higher than you do for most records for it to really come to life. And that is not a problem. It's not a big deal. The, the surfaces are quiet enough that they can withstand that. So um, even so, matching matching the levels on these two, what I originally thought was a <clears throat> more pleasant listen here um, actually sounds a bit bass heavy. Probably when I retired the other pressings um, on my system at that time, I appreciated the extra bass on this uh, classic. And it is very attractive for sure. But once the levels are matched, this one has just as much bass, but it's much more controlled and much more detailed. So I can hear things within the bass that I didn't hear on the classic. The classic is almost boomy at times. So that was one thing I noticed. Another thing I noticed with the sound is, <clears throat> um, excuse me, this one opens up as you would expect a 45 too, but there's much more detail in the mid range. So that is really impressive and a key to my enjoyment of this album as a whole. Traditionally, this album has not been one of my favorite Genesis albums. Um, I'm not a big fan of concept albums to begin with. And usually in a concept album, there are connecting tracks that are not really, you know, standouts by any means. And here, the connecting tracks, which are maybe not, you know, masterpieces and they're on their own, they have more character and more to enjoy. The increased clarity in the mid-range and the, and the detail in the bass has given this record um, a new life, in, in my opinion. It's given me uh, a new appreciation for the arrangements, and I was able to listen to the whole thing and stay engaged through the whole thing. That usually doesn't happen to me with a lamb. Um, by, this, by the end of the fourth side, or the last three songs, I'm like kind of over it usually. And this held my attention to the end. Now, I still think the last track is a disappointment for ending an album of this magnitude. The track, it just doesn't do it for me. Um, but besides that, there are so many musical highlights throughout this that even with the few weaker tracks sprinkled throughout, it's an engaging listen and all the more so on this new one. A um, couple of highlights that I noticed. Um, I've always loved Flying a Windshield, of course. Uh, if you know the track, you know that it is the first point on the album where you get the deep bass underpinning uh, that's used sporadically throughout this album. Um, it starts with an eerie Mellotron chorus uh, that's very effective. The vocal is pretty clear for this album. That's another thing about this album is the vocals all over the place are treated to different effects and you don't get too many natural vocals on this album. Everything has a little edge, a little phasing, a little down the tube quality <laughs> and for whatever it's an effect that um, I don't particularly like but it is does work with the with the music I guess so. In this you get a pretty clear vocal and when he says uh, I'm hovering like a fly waiting for the windshield on the freeway the last syllable of freeway is stretched out and you get this grand procession. And this is one of the most effective uh, moments on the record. And it's just magnificent on this. It's great on the, 
on the classic too. The classic has a little extra oomph, but um, the overall effect, <coughs> excuse me, is better on this on this 45. Um, another musical moment that I really liked was um, in the Lamia. Lamia. There's a, a line that says, muted melodies fill the echoing halls. And on that, you get another bass drop, um, which I really love. It's so, so majestic. It's so like, it's like being in church almost, <laughs> like hearing a huge pipe organ. It's kind of like that, um, that feeling of, wow, I can't believe something can go that deep. And that really makes the Lamia shine. Um, a couple other favorite tracks on this were um, Anyway, just gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful song. And I have never appreciated it as much as I did here. Um, another one that I really liked is a surprise to me because I've always kind of glossed it over and moved past it. And that is the instrumental, Hairless Heart. Beautiful, beautiful sound. I really enjoyed it how it sounded on the new pressing. Again, a stately, majestic, uh, hymn-like tune from, from probably Tony Banks. Um, just great, just great. It, it, that, that melody is stuck in my head all week and I keep humming it. So that's, that's a good sign. Another one that surprised me um, was Chamber of 32 Doors. I absolutely love that and it, had not stood out quite as much to me before, but there's a like a tubular bell used in this in the in the climaxes, and it sounds so beautiful the way it's integrated into the whole sound picture. Um, really came across with much more finesse in this new version. Um, overall, I'm very impressed with the new version. I love the classic, no doubt. It has a warmer, bassier sound overall. Um, is it more correct? Probably not, but um, on some systems, people will enjoy that if they're bass heads, <laughs> particularly like I was in, that, in those days. But um, this gives you a more balanced picture of what's there. And I can highly recommend the new Lamb Lies Down on Broadway for fans that are super fans of this album that want to um, put up with the 45 format and have the money to plunk down for it. It's $120, it's not cheap. So, uh, but they did a wonderful job with it. It's, it sounds probably the best it has ever sounded and is miles away from the remix, which, which I heard recently, I was listening to the songs, streaming them off Spotify while I was out and around. And I was like, this remix sounds awful. Oh my God. And every remix from, well, everyone that I heard, terrible, really loud, and just sounded like a different record. It was so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Stick with the original mixes for Genesis. And getting them this done like this is the way to go just like selling england by the pound not to the degree but with that one i really felt like the jump over previous pressings was significant this is significant as well but it wasn't quite the jump that um selling england had over the previous editions um i'm I'm very enthusiastic about it. I think if you are a big fan, you must have this record. Um, if you are on the fence about the lamb, you're not really like crazy about it, and you have maybe the classic, you're probably all set. Um, you don't need to go this way. But um, I will say also um, the side breaks on this are handled well, um, as well as can be expected. The only one that... Um, I found a little problematic was the end of Anyway was finished a little bit soon, so it worked fine. And on the next side, you got the synthesizer kind of blending into the guitar strums of the supernatural anesthetist. So 
that was the only thing that really stood out to me as a problem with the side brakes. But um, overall, I kind of like the smaller digestible bites of the album in this format. And that was another thing that appealed to me about this. Um, on this album, traditionally, I would listen to one or two sides at a time, and that's it. On this one, um, it's even better in that respect. I can take a small amount, really get into it, and really study it, and then move on to the next. And uh, for me, the 45 works well in that respect. But overall, a wonderful job from uh, Chris Bellman, from Chad Kassam, from Stoughton, from QRP. It's a, another success in the series. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Scott for The Pressing Matters. Have a great day.